What is going on, you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape coming to you with live commentary today. So today I bring you guys loot from 100 of the Whisperer. We're going to be going there and we're going to be showing 100 drops. Not going to be showing all of them, but definitely a lot of them and, of course, any uniques that I may be fortunate enough to get. So if you want to check the description or the top pinned comment, that uh, will be a timestamp for you guys to click on if you just want to see all the loot from this video. Uh, but I figure I'm going to start this out by showing you guys how I do a whisperer kill since I've now killed it a hundred times and I've uh, spent a whole day and a little bit of the night time as well there so I want to show you guys what I do uh, in order to kill it as quickly as possible and this is uh, I guess this is a guide but you know I figure I'd start the video a little differently this time so here we have the gear this is full ancestral we have the uh, saying staff and I do have a volatile nightmare staff which I actually thought would be a good idea because this is uh, you really just want to use magic here and this is a huge DPS special attack weapon. So it really comes in handy for the last phase. That's why I decided to purchase it. And then of course I have the Venator Bow from the Phantom Muspa video. And this comes in handy for a part that I'll show you guys as well during the fight. But all right, I never do guides, but I just want to show you guys what this is all about. So let's go ahead and get out of here. We're going to use a teleport directly there, which I got during this video. So a little spoiler, but uh, who cares? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. All right, so we're going to go to the cathedral. Um, and yeah, I'm not used to live commentary. Believe me, it's been a long time. So if I mess up at all, my apologies. But here we go. We're going to head in now. This is basically how my inventory looks. I almost never bring or I never use these Cerithome and Brews, but I just like to bring them just in case. But anyway, we're going to touch this odd figure uh, to disturb it, I should say. And we're going to imbue heart right here. And here we go. All right. So it's just going to be... Uh, yeah, I just got to avoid this thing there, that blue thing, and then pray accordingly. Don't get too close. And, uh, you know, this can be done um, if you want to click a little aggressively, a little much, you can do that. Or if you just want to stand there uh, and wait patiently to click, you can do that. It's just depending on the person. I tend to click more than I need to. But I feel like here, that's actually not a bad thing. You know, that's what this... Oh, okay, so I, pr I didn't pray right there. That's my bad. That won't happen ever again, I promise you guys. I've mastered this. All right, so now we have this. We're going to go ahead and click on that, the bottom left. And we're going to be standing here because it's the lowest HP. And you can also click out of that if you remember the HP bars, but... Since uh, we're just doing this live commentary, I figure we'll play a little safer. And there you go. You just got to stand behind all of them and then pray accordingly. And then you'll be out of the uh, nightmare zone or whatever that is. And here you go. So, all right. Absorb, absorb. Then you switch the prayer. You basically just have to switch prayers after the hit gets absorbed directly. So just like that. Yeah, I mean, it takes a little bit to get used to because it's such a weird mechanic, you know? But uh, you can do it. And then you know, at the same time, you have to avoid that because if that hits you, you're in trouble. All right, another thing here. We're going to do this. We're going to put on the Venator Bow. Look for Vita. There's Vita. Only go for Vita. And then after you get Vita, go for anything else as quickly as possible. I really don't know why you do this, but I just know it's good to do. So there you go. And then we're back out of that. And here we continue on the fight. We get a little frozen here with that gray thing. You just throw an ice barrage and you don't take any damage. God, I'm out of breath here. I need to get in shape. But anyway, here we go. Continue on with the fight. I actually actually love this boss um i was surprised you know usually i'm the guy that i'm just i'm, I'm so late to update sometimes because i just get a little intimidated but with this i mean it's just been nothing but fun all right here we go so we got to go on the lime green ones just got to click the black stone fragment anytime you get uh you know like a little rotation or a phase of this you just have to go in this zone and then do what is uh needed and there you go so we got it that probably wasn't perfect but you guys get the point going to get frozen again throw the ice barrage all right now we're going to continue on i actually think i forgot to uh use my special attack at the beginning of the fight so that's a little embarrassing but yeah we're going to use it at the end anyway so at least you get to see it there just continue to pray accordingly wait for those hits to register run at the same time there's a certain way to do it perfectly but again it it's not that hard to follow uh, whatever you're more comfortable with clicking wise. But yeah, I mean, it's a lot. It was definitely very hard to learn this. No doubt about that. All right, so here we go. It's dying now. We're going to go switch to the volatile, pray range, spec right away. That was a terrible spec, but it occasionally happens. And then this is like uh, the part I enjoy the most because I know I'm at the end of the fight and it's just so easy. You just got to wait for those hits to register. Then you switch prayers and you just run all around and, you know, it's not that bad. It really is. And once you get the hang of things, of course and occasionally you know the misclick there occasionally misclicks will happen but that's okay 
just depends on you know how much concentration you're paying. I still haven't played on uh, two accounts since I've started this uh, TOA or not TOA, but since I started killing the Whisper, I haven't been on my Iron Man because you know I want to pay as much attention as I can. So there you go, that's a kill. Wow, that was so rusty. I could have done much better, but you guys get the point. That's basically how I go about it. If you have any tips for me, let me know in the comments below. But that's my setup. I really like it. Volatile when it hits like high 77, 80. I mean, you can finish the last phase in no time. So that's why I love bringing it. This bow really helps out too. And that's about it. So hope you guys enjoyed the little guy. That's how I do it. Uh, you know, maybe it'll get updated. Maybe there'll be a better tactic. But uh, enjoy the rest of the video. We did get some luck today. And I hope you guys enjoy. And uh, here comes the voiceover. All right. So here we are. As we all know, during the quest Desert Treasure 2, you do have to kill one of every boss. So we're already starting at one kill count, which means this video will bring us to 101 kill count. And then we'll price check everything. You guys saw already that uh, we've already reached 100. 2kc if you skip that part i completely understand believe me i'm not the best at uh showing guides especially with live commentary maybe i should have voiced over that part but anyway made it a little bit more genuine and here's just a small compilation of all the struggles i had while trying to learn this boss and i gotta be honest with you it can be very intimidating uh even at the point where i had failed it for maybe four hours straight and i just convinced myself there's no way that i could do this but believe it or not trial and error uh you know you can keep uh, trying and practicing and you'll eventually get it and I decided not to give up and honestly I just looked at all the other Desert Treasure 2 bosses that were being live streamed or people were creating videos of and for me personally this seemed like the one I wanted to do first and what really changed the game for me was the final phase and purchasing the volatile staff because I've never owned this staff before I always thought it was hundreds of mills and just uh, completely out of reach price wise but it was actually very reasonable to purchase that along with the nightmare staff so I wanted to save it for the last phase because it seemed to me like that was my main problem. I would almost take no damage throughout the whole fight, but then in the last phase I would always die. So I, I wanted to use this staff to increase my DPS as much as possible to end that fight as quickly as possible, and this was truly a miracle because it worked perfectly the first time and many times after that because uh, as soon as I'd get into the final phase my volatile staff would hit a 70, an 80, a high 60, and then I would just have to hit it a few more times with a saying, so I didn't have to pray switch as much i didn't have to run or panic as much and yeah so a huge shout out to the volatile staff i don't see really uh, that many people using it but i do know some do so if you uh, want to speed up your kill or make this a little easier i do recommend it here's to hoping that it goes up uh, you know double the price and i can make some pro now nah, i'm just kidding but as you can see it's just it's very useful so i don't plan on selling it probably until i'm done with the thousand kill count here i wasn't sure if i wanted to do a hundred of every boss and then a thousand but right now i'm kind of leaning towards just grinding out 900 uh, uh, more kills or actually start from scratch and do another thousand honestly uh, to make more money and to make a bigger video for you guys after my luck today at the whisperer i uh, feel like i'm on a streak so maybe i should stay here for another thousand kills let me know what you guys think in the comment section below here we have our very first drop of the video this is an awakener's orb current price shown three mil at the time of receiving this i wasn't aware what it did but i did use it later on in the video and essentially it just makes this fight harder you use it right before you start the fight it'll ask you if you want to use the orb and if you decide to use it the fight is insanely harder than usual but in return the odds of you getting a unique skyrockets compared to the normal boss so it's like uh, think about you know chambers of Zarek and then think about challenge mode it's the same exact thing it's just a lot harder and yeah you'll see how I do later on when we try that out here we have our second drop 22 kills in the sirenic tablet which is used on the ring of shadows that you get after desert treasure 2 and this unlocks the teleport directly to this boss. That is huge for anyone to receive because this will save you so much time on banking. Anyone who hasn't received this knows the struggle of banking. Even with the quickest teleports, it still takes forever. Well, now we bring the ring every time and we have a quick accessibility to this location. And yeah, I was just stunned. It saved so much time. So that was a huge relief. Honestly, I'll take that over the three mil drop any day. But now that we've unlocked it, we don't have to uh, unlock it again. So there is that. But uh, as it goes for the normal drops here, I would say the highlight would be 
the raw monkfish, the battle staves, and the runite ore. Other than that, a lot of other items are just not worth that much. I mean, you even have bronze long swords on the drop table, which is fascinating. And here we have yet again another rare. This is the Awakener's Orb. Uh, current price shown there was 4.6 mil. Honestly, this price is varying. It could be 2 mil, it could be 3, 4, 5, it could be 1. I guess it really just depends on how many people are selling them, but I imagine over time that price will go down. But following that, actually a lovely back-to-back -back drop is the Shadow Quartz. And this is actually used on an Ancient Scepter to create the Shadow Ancient Scepter. So I'm really happy that I have like 16 Ancient Icons in the bank, so that means we can uh, make that Scepter later on tonight. I'm not sure how it looks or the, uh, you know, the uses of it. Maybe it includes a Shadow spell or something, but uh, I'll definitely find out later and let you guys know in the Loot from a Thousand video coming up probably in a week or so. But either way, you do have some Dragon Javelin heads. Uh, you can get Adamant Longswords and all sorts of really weird stuff, but I do love the uh, variety of this drop table, no doubt about it. Now let's go ahead and sacrifice this Awakener Orb. I am also sacrificing 3 million GP while doing this, but as you can see, it makes the fight much harder. The initial starting attacks are different. Um, you have more tentacles to deal with. 2,700 HP now. I mean, the HP is buffed. Uh, the attacks are different, but if you know how to pray, you should be okay. Just be ready to move a little extra from the uh, normal running you would originally do. And here we have the temple phase, which uh, I thought I did correctly. I went to the lowest HP ones, and then all of a sudden, they were all gone. So, yeah, I got instantly insane, and uh, I was disappointed. But, I mean, for the sake of discovery, for the sake of content, I'm glad I tried. But, yeah, I'm not sure why I said it was 5 mil, but, you know, again, prices vary depending on the minute, depending on the hour. So, we're going to just pretend that never happened. And just like that, we move forward, purchasing it back for 4 mil. That's not too bad. Anyway, here's 40 kill count. Uh, as you can see, you can receive manta rays and an ancient potion as a drop. Interesting to see that, but I just figured I'd collect the fish and the potions. I don't uh, like using them. I kind of like using my own supplies. Guess I'm just weird like that. But if you want to extend your trip, those manta rays can assist. I just uh, really find the thing that I run out of the most is prayer potions and stamina potions. Food's usually not the issue for me. But the uh, boss to me was an incredible experience. Let me know what you guys think of the Whisperer in the comments below, or do you yourself personally enjoy another Desert Treasure boss uh, much more? When I woke up this morning, which was about 11 hours ago, I did look up on the high scores, the person who had ranked one in the Whisperer, and they actually had 300 KC, so it's very impressive for that time. And here's another drop, the Chromium Ingot, which is actually used to create the new rings in the game, so I thought I had hit a jackpot with this one, but no, unfortunately it sold for about 700 K. Well, we're at 95 kills, which means we have six left to go, and as you can see in the title, ladies and gentlemen, this drop right here explains why I was able to use that title today. We actually obtained the pet. None other than the Wisp. Look at that. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. It even comes with an emote, which is on a one minute cooldown. Definitely deserving of a dance, and what a kill count to receive it at. 99. The initial ending KC of this video was 101, so we added two before the ending. They love the shadows. They love the darkness. I mean, that's practically me right there, so that's awesome. Uh, really enjoyed that. I haven't had a pet in a long time, so got very lucky and now I would love to receive the Virtus items. Make hundreds upon hundreds of mills here and that is the goal when we go for a thousand kills but today was just a nice preview of the first hundred for you guys. I'm not going to be doing 900 more. I will do a fresh thousand for you in the future probably the near future but uh, for now we're going to go sell everything we received. There's no point in price checking it because it's all inaccurate. Most of these items sold for 30% under price because there's just uh, so many of them coming into the game now. As you can see, my collection log is also shown on screen briefly, but everything ended up selling for a pretty reasonable 11.3 mil. This took about seven hours to complete, so that's not too bad considering we didn't really get too many, uh, you know, high value rares. And who can complain about that pet? Uh, the overall cost of supplies definitely was probably three to four mil. Blood runes are going to be used here a ton, so that is one downside. But other than that, it was an incredible journey. I hope you guys enjoy the video. So happy I got that pet. A huge thank you to the YouTube. YouTube channel members with a special shout out to Matthew Stivers, Deception Z, and XXotic X. See you guys soon and thank you for everything. And until next time, Mr. No Sleep out.